I just um, you mentioned um, earlier the problem with the Foreign Incursions Act. I just wondered if you could expand on that a little bit because plainly one of the provisions that we're talking about uh, making it um, a, a, um, an offence to go into a particular area without a legitimate reason is, is a response to the fact that we've had no prosecutions under the Foreign Incursions Act. Can you talk about the, um, the problems that have been experienced in getting prosecutions and would there be a way of uh, um, approaching this differently by uh, strengthening the Foreign Incursions Act rather than criminalising travel to a particular place? Has the committee been advised there have been no prosecutions under the Foreign Incursions Act? Because I don't believe that's correct. I can. I, I can. Have they? Yeah. There aren't many. Mm. Yeah. Um, the, the most notable one was a case uh, 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 over West Papua. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think there's only been three or four. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, since uh, no one Minimal. I don't know yeah. whether the fact yeah. that there's been none is, yeah. is correct. Minimal is my yeah. understanding. Uh, the, the problem with the Foreign Incursions Act, and, and I was involved in the in the late 70s when the Rhodesians were trying to recruit people in Australia and stamping it out. Um, the Act was originally brought in. Uh, as a result of the uh, incursion into Yugoslavia back in the early 70s by Croatian emigre groups. Um, it's also been, uh, prosecutions have also been considered uh, over support to Fretlin uh, during the time when uh, East Timor was occupied by the, uh, the Indonesians. Um, there have always been enormous problems with prosecutions under the Act because the evidence thresholds were set far too high um, and the Act um, basically came from a philosophical belief that people going, Australians going to um, undertake armed operations in a foreign country were motivated by political ideology um, and not a, uh, uh, not a, uh, a terrorist one as such. It, it, in some ways the, the 78 Act was a bit of a carryover from the Spanish Civil War way of looking at how Australians fought overseas. Um, it's completely outdated and uh, uh, we think the changes in this area with the, with the uh, ability by governments to prescribe areas and say Australians shouldn't go there to, uh, uh, because the only reason you'd go there basically would be to uh, 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 undertake quite serious uh, crimes, potentially even war crimes, um, is really just updating a piece of outmoded legislation that, that our experience since 1978 has proved doesn't work. Um, you say that the only reason you'd go to a place is to fight. There are uh, exceptions in there, like visiting family. You can't see any scenario where an Australian would go uh, to one of these prescribed areas. It, given that we don't even know whether we're talking at a village level, a city level, a regional level, or a whole country level. Well, there's, there's defences incorporated in the, uh, in the proposed bill. The defences to us seem, uh, seem quite reasonable. Um, but given the shocking examples recently of Australians uh, uh, going to areas controlled by the so-called Islamic State and, uh, and engaging in, in, in acts that by, the, by any definition severely contravene international humanitarian law, um, no Australian government of any political persuasion would surely agree that people's absolute right to travel no. is, is such that, uh, that, that, that uh, we shouldn't take reasonable steps to stop them doing things like that. But the, the people that um, have been, um, you know, the, the, have been included in the media, for example, that have been pictured engaged in hostile actions in these areas with these organisations, prescribed organisations, do you think you could get a prosecution for them? You certainly couldn't get a prosecution under the Foreign Incursions Act. You couldn't? Oh, well, it would be very difficult because the evidence, um, a lot of the evidence probably would be inadmissible in an Australian court. Um, the other problem with at least one of the people holding uh, cut-off heads up in Syria is they, they, there's a reasonable chance they'd get off on an insanity defence. Um, but there has to be, uh, be modernised measures to stop this type of behaviour. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous in this day and age, particularly in, in, in the multicultural society we have, that we're going to allow Australian citizens and residents willy-nilly to go off overseas and commit breaches of international humanitarian law. I mean, if a member of the Defence Force did it, uh, they could be prosecuted under a raft of legislation, not that they would. Um, and it seems bizarre to us, in a way, um, that people are objecting to similar limitations being placed um, 
on Australians who aren't members of the Defence Force or the AFP. Well, then it's a one in all in situation. I don't think anybody, I, think, I don't think that's a fair characterisation. I don't think anyone's saying that Australians have a right to go overseas and fight with IS. Nobody's saying that. Well, I'd have to say that most of the public debate on this, certainly in the media, um, ha ha has tended towards posing that there is an absolute right to travel. Um, and, and that if you have some form of uh, ethnic affinity uh, with an area that could potentially be uh, uh, be prescribed under the proposed legislation. This is, a, this is a, an infringement somehow of, of your rights. We would look at it from the point of view of responsibilities um, that it behoves any Australian, irrespective of ethnic or religious affinities, to not undertake war crimes. Well, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I think that that is a, a, that is a false statement of the division in this argument at the moment. Nobody is saying that Australians have a right to travel overseas to commit war crimes. Well, I follow pretty closely the debate um, in parts of the Islamic community, for example, and, and the debate is actually quite chilling. Um, many people in certain ethnic communities just believe they have an absolute right to go to Syria and fight with ISIL. And uh, the ADA would disagree with that belief. Well, I think we all disagree with that belief. <laughs> Okay. Um, the deputy chair.